Okay, so we're back with part three of the road to Smolensk. Let's see how far we can go. Uh, well, on turn four. I mean, already this has been yeah, it's been it's been two episodes so far, and we're we're making pretty good progress, I would say. Um, one of the things is that I mean, it being the kind of the third episode and all, uh, you you can see that this is quite a a long game with the two hundred turns or so, more or less because of all of the uh, all of the all of the time really spent on, on kind of what you what you have to do here. So it's already yeah, it's only turn four at the start of turn four, or at the end of turn four at that. So yeah, that's that. Yeah, taking a look at their front lines, they still have a fair amount of stuff for us to get through. But mind you, that would have been a much, much thicker if they had not, uh, well, had their forces here. So what I'm kind of interested in is uh, how many losses did we exactly kind of rack up for the, uh, for the, for the Russians? And well, how does it kind of compare for the historical result at this time? Right, so let's switch it back to us. It is right around, yeah, 600,000 men were meant for, for them. Very, very good. And going forwards, I think we do need that one turn of just reconsolidating our units here. So I'm surprised these forces still haven't pulled back. And since they have, this is really good because then we can get them to make a very kind of minor uh, push along the very edge of the map here. And the idea being is that this uh, this really keeps the enemy busy. That's the main thing. It doesn't say do too much damage per se, but it keeps the enemy busy with uh, with all their units here. So let's get these guys push them forwards. Push that unit out, and just in general, move the front back. So there we go. That frees up this unit. And over here, let's grab, yeah, let's grab these guys to clear out this patch of uh, forces. Or well, actually, before we do that, let's grab these infantry units. Let's move them forwards and try to establish a front like that. I had hoped that we had more troops to deal do with this, but it um, doesn't look like we do. Well, that works. So we can make a minor cut with the uh, forces right there. Yeah, we'll put these guys in uh, our zone of control, so that should cause some more losses. Oh, that actually made one of the RHQs retreat. That sucks. But that should handle out this portion. And we can get those people moving shortly. Taking a look at this town, they have some supply, but no fuel. <clears throat> so that's not too great. And setting up the tanks over here, let's take a look at what exactly is behind the, uh, the front over here. So right now, I'm guessing it would probably be better to go towards the north and then to kind of go around and sweep into the back of... Um, whatever town here that starts with a V instead of kind of smashing wherever we are right now. And likewise in the south, okay, so we see a lot of airfields and stuff. They seem to be concentrating a lot of stuff down there, but maybe making a push around here would be um, just kind of where we want to do that and then swing up. All right, so now that we have that, uh, you know, that stuff set up, let's get rid of that rifle division to start things off with. These units become more relevant as they kind of move, yeah, they move closer to uh, the action. And all right, so now over here, let's see. So 
So I don't think the AI will be able to kind of make a uh, side attack here. I don't think they'll be able to, yeah, I don't think they'll be able to attack our flanks. So right now I think we just kind of move up the rest of our infantry, set up for another press here, and then we'll kind of finish the job on uh, the Russians here. Right, so we'll get our people to push up once again. Let's grab these units, recombine them over here. And next turn, or this turn, we should be able to get the infantry to move up here. Press on Smolensk. Come on. Well, that town is surprisingly holding up. We'll do another push here, and that should ideally finish off Smolensk over here. There we go. So yeah, a lot of people surrounding there, 20,000 troops. Even more now are rounded up, so that's good. Grab the infantry, we'll move them closer towards the north. And now that small little stick is, is captured, we can take a look at their supply uh, units. And incidentally, they have a lot of fuel here. So now what we can kind of do is we can grab the, the HQs that have been just waiting inside the back here. And we can move them all of them forwards. So now we have much more range on on what we want to do here, on what we were, you know, what we can do. So really, really good. So now I'm gonna get, yeah, I'm gonna get our units to form up, kind of punch a hole through the sides of the uh, the Russians here. And what I'm looking for is whether or not I can kind of cross these two rivers here. And if I can, that would be perfect. There we go. Ooh, yikes, that would have been really bad if we uh, lost one of our tank units here. But as you saw, um, when they, when they, when, be, when these tank units become isolated, they, they are very suspect, susceptible to um, supply shocks and all that. So we will get our forces to relink here and form a bit of a line. And next turn. We'll see whether or not we can kind of make the drive downwards to this town. Ideally grab a whole bunch of troops before we move on Moscow. But this looks like quite the promising uh, scenario over here. We have already quite a few of the, the objectives here. The, the Soviets, they only get 20 points for containing Moscow. So um, with that said, yeah, this should... We, <laughs> we might be able to finish this scenario in under uh, 10 turns or so. So this is pretty good. Right, so that would, uh, so yeah, one of the things we need to do then is concentrate our, our tanks here. Okay, so let's start and see uh, whether or not we can make another breach here. Okay, now this might be a little ambitious, but there is a lot of territory we would have to get through to make a proper breach coming down from all the way um, over here. But if we're able to do so, this was encircle a lot of uh, a lot of the troops. Well, right now I'm trying not to press, say, really, really deeply into enemy territory. But at the same time, how should we do this? So they'll give up the city. The AI knows that uh, if I didn't turn the, the, or if I didn't turn north, I would turn south, and it's trying to pull back these troops. So, I mean, I could try to make a pocket here inside the south, break that, and then swing north. That would take a lot of um, time out, 
but it would also kind of seal uh, seal up a, a very good sizable portion of um, these troops right over here. So the question is whether or not I want to do that and <laughs> kind of going by my actions so far, it uh, looks like I do. So no, I don't want to move both of those units, but that's fine. We can recover from that. I want to loosely seal up everything over here. Force it so that the uh, the Russians, if they wanted to do anything, they would have to go to the very edge of the map here to do so. And spread out my guys so that they, uh, they exert that zone of control. And right, so this should control, or yeah, it should isolate a lot of these troops. Now, that doesn't mean we can't do both of these things kind of at the same time here. I can't push up any more of the infantry on, is the uh, is the thing. But I could split uh, Das Reich over here into smaller bits, capture the town with the tanks and a river crossing ideally. Hopefully we'll be able to get some supplies inside this Victory Point town. Yeah, so that is good. And then with these, uh, you know, side units, we, we can establish a position there. We can relocate the HQs over here. That would give us supplies. It doesn't look like they have too many... Um, too many other things which kind of sucks but next turn we'll be able to push up with a very minor tank force so with that said um it looks like a lot of the uh, a lot of the encirclement here will have to depend upon they, wow their air force is really coming back but a lot of the a lot of the encirclement here i guess will have to happen due to um well, the, uh, the neon green tank force instead. So yeah, I guess I could make kind of moves like that. Try to form an, uh, try to form a line here that way. This way, um, we won't be isolated by supply alone, or at least that's the plan. And that kind of contains a fair amount of uh, their forces. They'll try to pull back from this pocket, which is fine. Down here, I mean, we could try to move closer to the front. Yeah, so this is this is a very odd front right now. Um, this pocket here, we can definitely crush. That'll be a matter of time, but... Um, don't know how many troops will be able to escape around Smolensk over here. Probably a fair amount, um, but if we just kind of keep staying on their tails, uh, really exerting that zone of influence, the zone of control effect on them, um, we might be able to pick up, a, I don't know, an additional 50,000 troops or something like that, and that, that I would be fine with. It. Well, you know, that's actually only two, two to three units, so not too many. So let's take a look at what they ultimately do. Yep, so there you go. They're going to give up ground. They're going to try to save as many units as they can from this encirclement. And would you look at that? The river is stalling them up and a few other things. But a lot of their forces are kind of concentrated now along that front. If we can continue just fronting this towards them, ideally we'll be able to form an encirclement once again. And then, or, you know, that'll that'll kind of seal the deal here. Because once these two pockets are broken, the uh, the road to Moscow is practically clear. So there we go. End of logistics. And going back to our turn. Okay. So we know kind of approximately where their front is. So up here inside the north, a lot of their units are already dead. Or a lot of their units aren't, in, are, aren't encircled, is what I meant to say. Um, they're also probably most likely dead as well um, but that's only a side thing so let's get a few more units to push through here that'll this will this will keep up the pressure here not by not by too much looks like our HQ was moved back somehow oh well 
so I think we'll get the, the infantry here to move up along the front. And what we need them to do is to just keep the uh, the Russians occupied. So we'll get them to, um, to move up like that, yeah. And over here with these infantry units, same thing. If I move them up here, will they have another attack is my, uh, is my question. Probably is the, is the answer there. Okay, so that should give, uh, where that should set up the front for, for, for combat. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to look for locations where I can get our forces to set up for kind of this, uh, this offensive drive. So right now, I mean, the front is still it's it's still pretty messy, and with that said, it's it's rather it's rather difficult to to get things to work perfectly. But our tanks only have to get from say here. That is kind of what I would like to see. And the difficult portion that is getting across the river far enough towards the the side here that we'd be able to encircle the the big blob around um the town is the thing so we'll see and over here near the southern portion of the map uh i guess we yeah i guess we can start over here instead so we'll move our forces forward Bashin. And I'm guessing these guys, they're not considered fully encircled by the map edge. So they can still pull back, yeah. So that's not all too great for us. But I guess that's just how that works. So in that case, I don't think we need this uh, unit to, to stay exactly right on them. So in that case, I think I'll try to extend the, the, the front here going forwards. Looks like we have a lot of troops over here there they're actually setting up another where they're they're still trying to set up this line of defense so in that case um i'm gonna pull these guys back i should still probably try to maintain kind of control over here so we'll do something like that uh we'll get the if we'll get the infantry here to move in to settle around over here And I guess we'll have to settle inside this zone. We can't fully uh, encircle everything here. So we'll have to deal with the fact that um, the best we can do for now, at least, is to just clear out that area to, to the extent that they can't, um, the, the worth, to the extent that the two groups are still separated. So yeah, that'll be one part. The other part is, you know what, we'll just get all of these forces to make moves to once the front. So on the tanks and stuff, we need to we need to make a break. Right through right through kind of the forests over here is the thing. So taking a look at that, they're starting to set up defenses, um, but those aren't complete. So now this this will be this will be tough going here, uh, because a lot of the troops fleeing just kind of end off right over there. We need to push at least over this river. That is our our goals here. If we can get across the river, anything going for it from there will be good bad thing here is that all this is just swamp really difficult terrain to maneuver through I could go around even further but I think 
that would be even more difficult just because of all the vehicle or you know all the all the units blocking over there damn so here uh, you know what I think we really do have to push through over here instead yeah those swamps are just too difficult over here at least we can make some progress so in that case I guess we push make another opening or at least uh, as best as we can grab whatever else we can find really and chuck them forwards so this front is really starting to settle down with that said we can't do too much else yeah it looks like I'll have to kind of compress this on my own as well so we'll hunker down like this And yeah, I think we'll have to call it kind of a turn here. So this part will be intact. I mean, if we can kind of clamp down on this, at least we'll be able to, we'll, at least we'll be able to come out with a couple of, uh, a couple of small victories, if you will. So we'll try and see what we can do here. North here shatters really, really easily. Which is all well and good. So okay, so this area is clearing out nicely, but going forwards, I don't know if that'll continue to be a thing. So we'll continue to push our guys. What I need here is I need to open up the uh, the, the the flat terrain here, the good type of uh, you know tank country, to get the rest of the motorized troops and stuff like that to make the drive here. Yeah, so I think we'll. Continue pushing there, get these guys to move forwards, get rid of that unit. I think right here we might be able to get fairly close. To being able to grab a bunch of this front, but not seal it up completely. Yeah, I think we'd be able to press for something like this. You know, maybe... Spread these forces out slightly more, but yeah, that is that is pretty much all we can do for this encirclement right here. So we've advanced quite a lot through the map. It looks like they're concentrating in the south, but up over here, the best we can do, if only we had like these two tiles, right? At that point, that it would yeah, that would be all we need. But for now, we control yeah, we, we've sealed up the side of the river. They have a kind of a two two tile wide gap here, both of which still go through our zone of control. But it's gonna take um, yeah, it's gonna take a lot of stuff to to get them to to pass through there because they have to go through two rivers. They'd have to cross it once in their territory and again going through our zone of control there. So they have a lifeline, but um, 
that is probably not going to be a lot of uh, well forces there. And right, I should probably be doing the railroad construction detail right here, but um, I think honestly we'll play through this turn and afterwards we'll call it quits because I mean, assuming this is like a 17 turn scenario, we've already won practically. I mean, like at this point, it's only a matter of time before the uh, before the, the the Russians really have no no troops to throw at us. And because a lot of their forces are you know in the south of the map, I could go for Moscow real fast as well. So. For now, I think this is well. You know what? We'll, we'll, we'll wait out the turn. We'll destroy this pocket, but afterwards, I think that'll be the end of this. Uh, well, this scenario, um, more or less, because I don't think you'd you'd want just kind of filler turns. And the second thing being that, yeah, I doubt they can put out any more uh, resistance there. So we're yeah we're seventy six percent of the way to a million men captured there. I mean going with the vehicle crews we're probably already at a thousand men. Um, so the last thing to do on this turn I guess would be to like actually seal up this pocket and destroy it. And I think we'll call it a day there. So you know what we'll stack up a whole bunch of troops here. Make some minor pushes around here as well. And I think this is going to be the order here. So we'll break that part. We'll get a filler unit to push through. That completes the, uh, the hold here. And now as we gradually move through units throughout, that will hopefully cause more casualties than that. Well, let's just see. Yeah, this should be yeah, this should be a pretty good seal. From the looks of it, a fair amount of their troops are starting or are still able to get away. So in that case, this might be something that we would require another turn to do to work on. Uh, but anyhow, I think we'll leave it at this for for now. Um, more so because, I mean, if I go to, yeah, right over here, for what it's worth, I think we hold the vast majority of the settlements which are worth anything as well. And even if we didn't, we would probably be able to sweep those away pretty fast. So um, from the looks of it, we have, well, we have, technically we have this one. I'm just going to count that as our own. We have two to their three, technically two, because Moscow's worth barely anything. So overall, I would call that a pretty good success. And hopefully that has kind of showed you guys uh, a little bit about how you, how do you kind of make these pockets and how do you um, fully develop them. So, so hopefully somebody from the, uh, the community knows a little bit more about the mechanics between, you know, after you make these pockets, when exactly does isolation um, kind of fully take effect? And with that said, you know, when you can really start to destroy some of these forces, which would, you know, or be otherwise routed forces over here, because I noticed that inside some of the earlier pockets, a lot of them, I mean, were still destroyed here. However, um, it looks like the vast majority of the forces managed to flee away. So uh, again, I hope you've enjoyed this scenario. I think we'll play maybe one or two more, um, but that'll be that for our coverage of, well, uh, War in the East here. And of course, if you've enjoyed this series, be sure to check out my uh, my ongoing one about Panzer campaigns. It's a similar game. It's uh, smaller in in scope but not in scale if that makes any sense it's a game about market garden um but nevertheless you fe it features also just an absolute ton of tiles and nevertheless is also just a wonderful game in general so um once again i hope to see you guys there bye bye for now